Hello? I I'm sorry, who's this? The 80s? You want what? You want your hair back? Well, I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. Y yes, I'm recording my vlog. Oh, you, oh, you watched? Uh, oh, that's really nice of you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, what am I going to be talking about this time? Oh, this time I'm going to be talking about um, some works in progress and some items that I've had to put into hibernation. Oh, yeah, and I started Christmas knitting. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. I'm going to talk about that, and I will also talk about some magical memories on this episode of Doll Belly Knits. Welcome to this episode of Doll Belly Knits, the vlog about knitting, crocheting, and crafting with a highlight on using what you have on hand to make beautiful objects. If you are a return viewer and you have stuck around after that horribly cheesy intro, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you're a new viewer, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you haven't been too frightened by what you've seen so far. Other places you can find me on social media include Instagram and Ravelry as Dollbelly. And there's also a group for this vlog on Ravelry in the groups tab. Just look for Dollbelly Knits. So this episode, I'm going to talk about uh, works in progress. I'm going to show you some finished objects. I'm also going to discuss a few items that I've put into hibernation. And of course, we will talk about magical memories. So let's just get started works in progress. The uh, first thing I want to talk about is Christmas knitting. <laughs> Last week I discussed about how I am going to have to start Christmas knitting if I want to get things done in time and I wasn't sure how I was going to show those projects on the show. But I think I will give it a go the first uh, knitting, uh, Christmas knitting project that I started is for the husband. And I think I can count on him to not watch if I tell him to look away. So husband, look away. This is your cue. Look away. Don't look back until I tell you to. Okay, so. Beautiful bag. <laughs> what I'm uh, working on for husband is... So, of course, uh, because I printed it out in black and white, you can't really see, but if you go to Ravelry and you search for this particular pattern, you'll be able to see other finished projects and you'll be able to see what it looks like in color as well in, uh, as a different, a uh, bunch of different varieties and um, variations. I love um, Stephen West's particular patterns. I think the construction is phenomenal and outstanding. Um, yeah, love him. He's a bit eccentric, uh, but I think that's kind of what appeals to everybody about him as well. Some of the colorways and, and the items that he does are just, uh, woo, eye-popping to say the least. But I think what is so appealing about his designs is that if that if that uh, particular color scheme that he chose or stepping out that far in the the spectrum, the rainbow spectrum, isn't for you, then you can still do the designs in more muted colors and they're still beautiful. So I love that. And this is what I have so far. Well, let me see. I am using... I am using a, um, a yarn that I've never used before. 
uh, it's called, uh, let me, it's called, this is hard to pronounce, I have an S problem. It's called Chic Sheep. Uh, it's by Red Heart. Can you see that? And it's a merino wool blend. And it's worsted weight. And it's, you know, this color scheme. Try not to give away too many details here. So I really like this so far. It feels really nice. It's got, um, it's plump. So it's working out really nice. I am using, uh, there's two sizes that the pattern gives, a smaller and a larger version. I am doing the larger version because I'm using worsted weight. If you want to do the smaller version, then you would use a fingering um, weight. Um, also, the needle is a circular needle, a large one. Um, and it is, uh, I'm using a 4.5. I think the pattern calls for something slightly different yes it calls for a five i'm using a 4.5 because that's what i have and i tend to be a larger knitter so i think everything's going to be okay besides the fact that i don't think gauge is really too important with this particular project it is worked from side to side so as you can see it's really long and i have probably every cute and pretty stitch marker that I own involved in this particular project because of the nature of the construction and the design. So I got gnomes, I got little sheepies. I also have some, I only have two of them on here, but I know, I, oh yeah, here it is. Little owls. This was a really cute set. It's like little baby owls. And then there's one big mama owl, which is somewhere else. But look at this. So far, I'm only on like row 15. And look at that so far. These um, two make two together, uh, either knit two together or slip slip knit as whatever the pattern calls for. It's making these really nice ridges. It's just I'm really super happy so far. Um, the pattern itself says it is um, architectural in nature. I agree 100%. So I am super excited. Not only is Christmas knitting started, which is kind of funny for me to say I'm super excited because if I'm terribly honest, Christmas is my least favorite holiday. <laughs> I know. Boo! Hiss! I hear it. It's just, it's not my favorite holiday. Um, but I am particularly excited about all the knitting that I have been doing for the holiday over the past however many years. And I like getting started and, you know, getting it finished on time and having this, you know, big reveal on, on the big day. So I'm super excited, looking forward to starting other projects. Um, and I don't think this is going to take me too long, to be honest. Um, it's going quick because um, the pattern is not difficult to follow um, and that for me to say it's not difficult to follow says a lot because um, these types of patterns are not intuitive to me it usually takes a long time for me to get the picture of the pattern in my head so that I don't have to look at the pattern um, but I've actually cottoned on pretty quickly this time um so super happy i don't think it's going to take me long and i should be able to start another christmas gift uh very soon so yay uh, put this away okay next working project is actually a project that i pulled out of hibernation it is the wedding blanket because the wedding will be here shortly um which I knew was going to happen. I would put it aside thinking I had plenty of time and then not have plenty of time. So it is a C2C blanket, end to end, uh, crocheted. I'm using a size H uh, hook. Uh, I think that's uh, five millimeter. Um, 
but uh, I'm using stash although I did have to pick up some items to um, supplement my stash I did that when I was back in um, the States visiting my mom hi mom because I'm trying to do all green um, and I just don't seem to have any green in stash so this is what I have so far uh, yep so it starts at the tip and it goes out and then when you're happy with the width you can start bringing it back in so I've got a couple greens going on here this is a dark green I got quite a bit of that um, and then after this ball is done I have other balls to add this is like a multi brown but mostly green there's this woo lime green yep and then there's mm, it's kind of limey too but not as vibrant as the other one and more like a sage kind of kind of similar to the one in the beginning um so We'll see how far this will take me. I know it won't take me to the end. I'm probably gonna have to buy some more um, and or hunt deeper and further into the stash that is in the garage. But um, working on that, I probably should start putting progress keepers on uh, some of these things so you can see the progress that I'm making. Although with a C2C blanket like that, especially with the size that I'm going for, I usually tend to try to make one that would fit um, a double or even a queen uh, if it's for a wedding there's no way I'm gonna be able to show you that whole thing on, on the screen anyway so progress keeper for that particular project might be a moot point still um, I will try to show you something I mean that's why you come here right <laughs> you want to see what I'm doing and see how far I'm getting um, but yeah so I've got to put some work in on that Next work in progress, I'm not gonna pull it out of the bag because you've seen it uh, a lot and I actually really haven't gotten a lot further on it, is the Bird of Fire. Um, oh, I'll bring it out, yeah, I got it right here. Why not, right? Okay, so Bird of Fire, I have renamed mine Water Phoenix, which I've also told you lots and lots of times by now. Um, but merely because of the color choices it is really pretty I have to say it is really pretty last time I showed it to you I had 10 flames I'm on flame number 11 now or maybe number 12 maybe I start one let's count them let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve doo, 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 doo. yeah <laughs> yes yeah, so I got 12 flames so yay I actually have more than I thought I did um, there's 19 flames in total uh, so I'm a little bit further along and then when you're done all the flames and the sky part or as I like to say fins and water there is going to be this um, neckline that I'm going to have to pick up a, a lot a lot of stitches but that adds to the depth of the shawl which is a good thing because looking at it right now it looks pretty tiny titchy but um, with the added height that the collar will give it and the um, blocking of it, it's gonna be gorgeous when it's done. I really, really am excited about having this and using this and I may actually like make up a reason that hubby has to take me like downtown and like to the theater or something so that I can wear it. I'm sorry, I'm distracted right now because my stitch marker fell off and hopefully it didn't get twisted or out of place. Um, so I'm just gonna shove that back here and 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 hope for the best but um in case you are new to the program the bird of fire is a knit along that i'm participating in it is hosted by mel brown crafting podcast um, and if you would like to participate it is absolutely not too late we still have people joining the knit along and casting on right now as we speak um, so there's no deadline it's just a um come as you are and join the group um, and uh, participate in the fun and like I've said probably every time that I've talked about it I think that this knit along is particularly worthwhile um, in 
in engaging with because the author of the pattern, the creator of the pattern, um, Sarah Wilcox, is actually partaking in the knit along as well. So that if you have questions like I did and like other knitters did, you can get it straight from the horse's mouth and you can get your answer from the um, pattern maker herself. So I do encourage you to join and um, you can find uh, Mel Brown Crafting Podcast in the groups tab on Ravelry and also um, if you do participate and you are going to share pictures of your knitting on Instagram you can use the hashtag birdafirekal to share that with everyone and we can all see um, the progress and the beautiful things that you're creating as well. Okay, okay. Uh, next work in progress is actually a project that I've had in progress um, for a while but I think it's never actually been shown on the show and I think that's because there was one episode that I had to refilm like three times uh, because of a lot of technical difficulties that I was having and I think I ended up just like dropping it and and not even bothering with showing it so I'm gonna show it now <laughs> Um, and obviously it's not one that I work on too regularly because it probably would have cropped up um, before now. But um, it is in this very pretty bag that um, Mel made. Um, so, and it's all apples. It's got apples. That's why I picked it. My mom's kitchen is all apples. So it made me think of my, oh yeah, the back. You can see the back has got a lot of apples on it. Made me think of my mommy. So, um, what I'm doing uh, is I'm basically making coasters that you can put uh, hot drinks on or cold drinks, but I do think hot drinks because I am using, how you can hear it, bottle caps. So I take um, bottle caps from my favorite beverages that, uh, you know, you have a couple beverages, you keep the bottle caps. And, oh yeah, this one here. Yes, favorite. Um, and then I am using a cotton uh, yarn. It's actually um, thread. It's like a size three cotton thread, and I just crochet around them. And then um, I put them all together in a pattern, and it makes a coaster. Um, <laughs> and I can see one across the room. <laughs> uh, but I don't have the ability to reach it. So I'll put pictures in uh, of some of the coasters that I finished because this is a project that I have done several times uh, before, not just in the shape of coasters, but as I was also um, trivets or hot pads. This is um, something from my childhood, like way, way, way back. I only have a vague recollection of this, but I think covering bottle caps and reusing and recycling the bottle caps for other purposes is something from like the 50s. And I have this vague, recollection of doing something similar to this with my I want to say it was my great aunt Treva because I think it was my mom's aunt and but instead of crocheted what she did was she used um, round circles of fabric cotton fabric and then did a running stitch and then pulled it together to cover the cap and then sewed them all together into trivet or to wall hangings. I particularly remember grapes being done. Um, and so all the little circles were purple circles of fabric and then the running stitch and, and putting that in there. Um, I don't like to sew because I don't like to be precise about cutting and you would have to be precise about cutting the circles. You probably could just use a template, a cardboard or plastic template once you've figured out what size that you want um, to make the circles in, obviously large enough to cover the 
bottle cap. But anyway, that's not for me. I'd rather much crochet over top of it. And if you Google like 1950s bottle cap trivets, I think you can still find patterns um, for for doing this yourself. Like uh, I did a trivet for my sister and it was the shape of a pineapple. I think I actually saw that that was a pattern from the 1950s. I think I had Googled that. So anyway, that's a nice way to uh, reuse and recycle something. And additionally, the bottle cap um, protects your surfaces from heat and it, uh, because it's metal and then you got the cotton on top of it. But it also gives a little lift off the table or the countertop or wherever it is that you're putting the hot item. So um, I think it's cool. Um, I like it and I think it's a nice way to reuse and recycle material that otherwise may end up actually in the landfill. Additionally, I think it's a great idea that if you know you're going to have a party and um, it's a special party like a 50th birthday or baby shower or something and you serve quite a few um, beverages that have bottle caps whether it's beer or soda pop or whatever if you remember to collect the caps the ones that haven't been too damaged then you can go ahead and you can do something like this and put it together and then you have a nice uh, memorabilia piece for the event so yeah, so that's, I got that going on, and I actually will come back to this and, and talk a little bit more about it um, at the end of the show. So, I think that is my works in progress, all of them. So, I will move on next to finished objects. I only have one finished job, no, I lie, I have two finished objects. First finished object is uh, the beanie for charity that I was doing. This is the second one that I've done. Um, this is the pattern for, um, not for, this pattern has been produced by Tracy Gretchen. It's called the Ramble On Beanie and I really do love it. Uh, I love the way it looks. I love the way it knits up, obviously, because I've done two of them already and I'm set on doing more. This yarn, this time around, is a, I know this is a red heart. It's an acrylic. It's okay. I wasn't 100% happy with how it felt in comparison to the Sidar Hayfield Bonus Chunky yarn that I had used for the first cap. So lucky for me, when we went on our trip to the Shetland Islands, I came across a hobby craft and was able to pick up a couple skeins. Um, so the next two hats, I'll be able to use that particular uh, acrylic yarn and I was much happier with how that felt and how that was knitting up. Additionally, I only need to use one strand of the Siddhar, whereas this was uh, two strands of the worsted weight Red Heart held together. So that also added a little bit of, not difficulty, but kind of unhappiness to the knitting of it. Nobody really likes using two, well, that's pretty general of a statement, isn't it? I don't care for using two strands of yarn at the same time if I can help it. It feels really bulky. It feels kind of weird. And I was also playing, I guess it could be called yarn chicken. Not, not that I was worried I was going to run out, but I was using the two strands, one from the inside of the skein and one from the outside of the skein. So that had a huge potential, huge, uh, that had a huge potential to cause a big knot and a big problem for me. Luckily it didn't, so that's great because um, this is for a good purpose and I'm excited about being able to participate in uh, giving to charity by making something with my own hands. Additionally, um, I don't have the yarn with me, I put it up. The Two skeins of the Siddhar that I picked up. One is like a navy and one is, uh, one is a navy color and one is pink. So that will definitely be like male, female. I'm going to knit the next size up with those two. This, um, this one and the first one that I did, I used the teen slash small adult size of the pattern. So I think I'm gonna go uh, one up and see how that works out. I think this 
works particularly fine. I'm going to put it over my huge 80s hair to show you what it looks like on. So it definitely covers my ears. I think it's supposed to be a little bit more slouchy than maybe it is. Um, so I think that's why I want to try the next size up and see how that goes. But also, um, I think I do have a medium slash small size head, so I want to make sure that there's some um, variety available to be given to the, the people who need them. I also think that probably one of the reasons the hat isn't as slouchy as it could be is because the decrease rows are very uh, sharp. Like it's knit two together all the way around for two rows and then knit two together, knit one. And then like that's it, you're done. So if it had maybe been a little more gradual of a degree decrease, it might have been more slouchy in nature. But I do think that the sharp decrease adds some textural slash architecture design to the beanie. So I am totally not putting the pattern down. I love the pattern. I think it's great. I'm going to keep using it. I'm just telling you what I was thinking and what I thought about while I was knitting it. So there's finished object number one. Finished object number two is hubby's birthday socks. So I put them on my DIY sock blocker. Yeah, so these are um, the socks that I actually started um, knitting on an airplane uh, a little while ago. This uh, yarn is Premier Brand Wool Free Sock Yarn. I use this one a lot. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I've done this colorway for my mom or somebody because I've definitely knitted this one before. This is a little bit of a departure for hubby. I usually do him blues and grays and blacks and try to stick to more um, muted colors because he does wear them to work. So I want them, I want him to wear them. Although I know if I made him something orange, he would wear it too. Um, but yeah, so this is just like a vanilla sock. I did, um, I do them toe up. I use two circular needles, uh, 16 inch circular needles, so I can do the socks two at a time. And I do toe up with, um, I don't think you can really tell. This is kind of a dark color yarn. I do wraps and turns. So for my short rows, I actually wrap the stitch and I go back and I pick it up. And then this is just knit, knit, knit. And then for the heel, I actually do the same thing. I just do wraps and turns and then um, I do pick up some stitches along the way to try and make sure that there aren't any holes. This side looks pretty good. This side, it always seems to be that there's one side of the sock that has just a couple holes in it that I can't seem to close up no matter what I do. But you can't tell, so it's not a gaping hole, that's for sure. And then for the cuff, I did a one by one twisted rib, which is actually um, a newer thing that I've been doing uh, for these socks. Um, and I do like the way that that looks. It looks a lot nicer than I think just regular uh, one by one rib or even regular two by two rib, because I used to do two by two rib as well for the the sock yeah so I'm super happy he's super happy he's already worn them I can see some Frankie hair <laughs> on them but okay so here they are hubby's birthday socks I just realized that I never told Hubby he could look back at the program. <laughs> Hopefully he figured that out on his own after I started talking about the next work in progress. <laughs> but um, if you're still looking away, you can look now. <laughs> I think I'm definitely going to have to rethink this Christmas knitting <laughs> thing. Um, okay, next on the list is hibernation items, which seems like I talk about that a lot and I guess it's because I'm constantly pulling things in and out based on the um, 
due date or my pleasure with the item. So, items in hibernation that I recently put in hibernation. The first one that I recently put in hibernation is the snack bags. So, uh, the reusable snack bags that I talked about past couple episodes, we are coming to the end of the school year. We only have a couple weeks left. So, I'm probably not going to get all three snack bags done to replace um, what my kids use on a regular basis. And the reality of the situation is that then I won't really need them until September. So I'm going to put them into hibernation until a little bit later on. I did, however, start doing the stitching. Um, I told you that I was going to be using um, a Doritos design, a sweet chili pepper something. Um, so I started top stitching the word Dorito on here, just like I did for the other one. Um, mm, like I said last episode, how this object is finished is going to determine my ultimate happiness. I'm not sure I'm liking the top stitching. Even though it's the same thing that I did for the other Doritos bag, and I am happy with the other Doritos bag, I'm kind of wondering if there's a better way to do this. Maybe actually crocheting the letters and then stitching them on instead of top stitching. Because the top stitching doesn't necessarily look complete. It's, you can see like holes here and there, even though I've tried to basically, it's duplicate stitch. So I have tried to make sure that I am going over each and every stitch. But it still seems like there's little holes here and there. So. That's probably another reason I'm going to put it into hibernation because I want to think about it a little bit longer. Maybe just crocheting the letters will work out instead. I don't know. But that's where I am and like I said I'm not going to really need them until September and Christmas knitting and um, the wedding blanket those are things that are starting to come to um, a critical juncture so I'm going to work on those a little bit put this aside have a think about it and get back to it um, at another time before September hopefully. The other thing that I'm going to put into hibernation pretty much for the same reason as the um, snack bags is the um, tentacula. Keep it in my soap sud sack. So I was doing a venomous tentacula. I am knitting a venomous tentacula. I can't, Jennifer, Jennifer DeSalle, I think is the uh, creator of that pattern. Um, and since the project is for me, I think that's why I'm gonna just put it into hibernation. I'm already working on the bird of fire, which is for me. And, you know, like I said, Christmas knitting is starting to take priority. Other gifts are starting to take priority. So since I already have something that I'm working on for me, I'm taking care of me too but I don't need to have two things um, going on at the same time. So, and it's really, I haven't been working on it. I haven't been picking it up. So it's really not getting any further um, than the last time I showed it to you. So, I mean, it is pretty and um, I'm excited because it's red. I don't really have any red items, although red's like my favorite color. So I'm excited about that. Um, and it's got little beads on it that I'm excited about that. So I know when it's done, it's going to be gorgeous. I just don't feel like I have the ability to work on it right now because there are other deadlines that I want to meet. I know you shouldn't feel guilty um, about your craft and about, you know, what is a hobby. And I don't feel guilty about it. I just, you know, I like to prioritize things and this is just isn't a priority right now so it's going to the bottom of the pile. Um, so again like I've said in other episodes if I put something into hibernation you won't see it again until I pick it up and start working on it again and making some progress. Oh, Something else I wanted to say about the um, snack bags is um, my mom um, the last episode I talked about the lining of the snack bags and that I wasn't sure what it was called. My mom told me that she believed 
the fabric was called oil cloth. And this is proof that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because I do believe that's actually what I was using. And I say it that way because I looked up oil cloth and the history of it. Oil cloth uh, was a fabric, is a fabric that is traditionally prepared by boiling linseed oil and some other like metals to um, sear the fabric and make it waterproof. So since metals were used in the process like lead kind of made the fabric a little toxic um, and it wasn't good for eating purposes. Um, but it was good for making weatherproof clothing. However, over the years, they modernized the process and they were using less toxic substances. That was good for using the, the product for other items that had involved food, but not so good for uh, clothing, particularly the seams of the objects if you were um, making an article of clothing like a coat, a weatherproof coat, the seams weren't as waterproof as they were with the original uh, formulation of, uh, and preparation. So uh, it, I, in reading and, and reading up on this, it made me think about the, is it Gordon's or Gordon's fishermen on the packages of your fish sticks and your fish fingers. <clears throat> He's got that yellow uh, weatherproof cajole slicker thing on and it's got a cape on it there was a purpose for that cape the cape was added to the clothing items that were made from the less toxic version of oil cloth because the seams in the shoulders would leak water so they put this cape over top of it to help prevent that from happening um, and once they started using the less toxic and less effective version of oil cloth, um, it became um, not as favorable to use it for clothing, but it ended up being used for tablecloths. And that's one of the iconic um, uses for oil cloth is tablecloths. So, that, I mean, that's what I was thinking I, when, I, when I thought about what can I use to make this uh, somewhat of a weatherproof, seal-proof, um, moisture-proof insert, I did think picnic tablecloth. Um, so my mom thought the same thing. She just knew exactly what it was called. And then today, um, they don't really use oil cloth as much anymore. It's the PVC cotton uh, fabric um, that they use the PVC um, in the process to make the fabric um, pliable and waterproof. So mom's always right. <laughs> and thanks for sharing, mom. And uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed the little oil cloth uh, history lesson that they just got. <laughs> Now we come to the part of the show that I like to call Magical Memories. The reason I call this part of the show Magical Memories is because since the beginning of Doll Belly Knits, since I posted my very first episode, I have touted the idea and the philosophy that it is better to make memories than it is to accumulate more stuff. And I really do practice what I preach. Um, the last couple episodes, I did make some acquisitions. Obviously, I went to the Shetland Islands and I did not leave without purchasing some wool. But um, in general, I tend to and my family tends to gear towards creating memories versus um, acquiring stuff, specifically when it comes to holidays and gift giving. So the magical memory for this week um, is hubby's birthday. It was his birthday. Um, and I wanted to share with you um, the gifts that we gave him because all of his gifts were actually handmade. Um, and I just think it's so, obviously I think it's wonderful because it's the way that I live my life. But I recently saw uh, a new, um, for me, it was new to me, uh, podcast 
by um, Aiden the Knitting Monk. And the name of the podcast is A Maker's Pilgrimage. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, and the episode that I just watched, he was answering some Q&A questions. And one of the questions was that someone had asked him why he chose the word maker in his, you know, in his title of his podcast, A Maker's Pilgrimage. And they actually said that they thought the word maker was a bit pretentious. <laughs> but in his explanation, he was, you know, basically saying that, yeah, I, I'm a maker because there's a value in what I do with my hands. And it's a value above and beyond what you can get through commercial means. And he said it so much more eloquently than I'm saying right now, but it really touched my heartstring. And I was like, yes, this is, this is why I do what I do. This is why uh, I live the way that I live. And this is why I model this particular behavior for my children. You, you just can't get it from Pound World. You can't. And apparently you won't be able to get stuff from Pound World for much longer. That's crazy. But yeah, you could go to the store and you could easily purchase a gift for somebody for their birthday and it'll be done and over with. And the person could be super excited and very happy about that gift. There, there's no denying that, that we all live in a commercial world and we love commercialism. We love being able to buy stuff. There's not anything necessarily wrong with that. But there's also nothing wrong with making stuff with your hands. And, and there's value in that that you, you really can't get at Pound World. So I um, wanted to share with you what the girls and I did for hubby. Obviously, I'll just show you again real quick. I made socks. It's something that I do. It's part of our family tradition. If it's your birthday, you get a pair of socks. Which, by the way, I am very sad to report that the socks that I made for my middle child's birthday, the blue ones, the Atlantic Current socks, they don't fit her feet. I mean, we were able to get them on because I was putting those puppies on. But um, the yarn that I chose was a, a different yarn than I normally use. It didn't have a lot of stretch. And although it was a beautiful color, it was a beautiful name, the socks are beautiful. They really didn't go over her foot very well. So unfortunately, she's probably not gonna be able to get a lot of use out of them. They'll have to go to sister number three. Um, yeah, so anyway, hubby's got socks from me. From, uh, where's it at? From our youngest daughter, she made a little owl and it's cute and it does actually sit um, and uh, he'll probably put it in his office and take it with him. Um, I did help her a little bit with some of the embellishments here on, on the sides, but the value in this, not only is it something that she made with her hands, he recently sat down with her and taught her how to sew. Um, Cause I tell you every episode probably, I am not a sewer. It is not what I do. I can't stand having to be precise and you know measure twice, cut once. I just wanna start cutting. So she had said a couple weekends ago, I wanna sew something. And I was like, why, why are you talking to me? Like, <laughs> um, and my husband stepped in because he's done some sewing in his life and he showed her how to make a pattern out of a piece of paper and how to cut the fabric out and to how to stitch it and then turn it inside out and stuff it. And so not only is this a cute little object that his daughter made with her own hands, it's a reminder of a time that they spent together and uh, uh, something that he taught her how to do. So you can't get that at Pound World, you can't. So there's a little owl from our youngest. Middle daughter made hubby uh, a basket. So she crocheted this um, out of cotton. So it's got some structure to it. And um, this isn't the first time we've done that. 
because he likes to, you know, he's got little bibs and bobs around, um, and baskets are always good. You put them on the countertop in your office, uh, in the kitchen, wherever, and then it kind of helps organize your junk, <laughs> and you can tuck things inside, and it looks pretty. So um, functional and um, function and form, Mary. So that's really good. He likes that. And then oldest child she painted him this picture um, he's totally into boats and water and aquatic things so she made him this little nighttime scene of a paper boat on the ocean surrounded by some fireflies and a shooting star and yeah it's really awesome um, really happy this is actually acrylic paint on a canvas um some canvas pieces so that's really nice and yeah and you know we had cake and made him his favorite dinner and all the other kind of stuff that you do but these are things that you know you just can't buy at the store um, and some of the items have uh, additional memories uh, innately in them because of um, times that you spent together before um, doing things together like the little owl and the stitching so yeah i hope you enjoyed seeing some of those works uh, from my uh, children and i just wanted to get back to the bottle cap coasters that i showed you in the works in progress the philosophy of life that we kind of live by that the things that you make by hand do have some value above and beyond commercialism not to me isn't just um fluffy talk it's practical as well and one of the things that i've done uh, so it's been a little while one of the things that i did in order to try and model behavior for for the kids and show them that you know you can make stuff with your hands and it does have um, practical value was i opened an etsy shop and i will put um the name of the shop and the link to it if you're interested to go and look at it this certainly isn't a plug for you know go buy stuff because there's only a couple items listed in the shop but the whole purpose of the shop was to show the girls that you can make things with your hands and you can actually make money from them if that's what you desire in life. If that's a particular field or a path that you're gonna go down, that not only do you do a craft because you love to do it and it's kind of more, a little more than a hobby for you, that you're, you're really good at it and that you want to try to make your living from it. So I opened the Etsy shop with that in mind and I put, you know, the bottle cap coasters are on there as, as an item. My daughter has some artwork on there, which I gotta say, after we posted some of her artwork, <laughs> the, the hits on the site and the views went up a lot more than for my bottle cap coasters, which I think is fantastic, obviously, because I'm the mom and, you know, I think that's fantastic. Um, but it's just a way of living out what you believe uh, for me I thought that was a natural way to model some good behavior that yes the works of your hands are um, not only valuable for the emotional um, pleasure that you get out of it when you give a gift to somebody and you know you made it with your hands and it makes them so happy that there is also a practical side for it possibly um, in the future that if you have something that other people want and they don't necessarily have the ability to make it themselves then you might be able to make a go or, or a life or earn some wages in some way maybe just some pocket money so you can go and you know buy something from pound world <laughs> yeah. all right everyone that's it for me for this episode of doll belly knits I hope that while we are apart that you have um, some happy knitting. I hope that you have a great week uh, in the meantime. And please get out there and make some magical memories of your own. See you next time. Bye. I'm going to take another sip of this coffee despite how hot it is.
I'm getting tired and I can't think anymore.